Code Explain says hi. Today we're going to create the ping pong game using JavaScript. Let's see the tutorial plan. We're not going directly to type in the code, instead, we're going first to see the logic behind the game, after that, we're going to open our text editors. Let's see a preview of the game. Here I can control the paddle using the mouse and when the paddle hits the, the, the ball here, uh, its direction or its angle it depends on where the paddle hits the ball. If the ball uh, goes over or beyond the canvas or the table, we increment the score by 1. Also, when a paddle hits the ball, its speed increases. So let's go. In general, to create the games, we will need JavaScript and the HTML5 canvas. So the first thing we will do is to go and create an HTML file, then the very basic HTML code. So this will create a blank page. Then I will need to create the canvas element. I will give it an ID with it on the height. This will create a box or a rectangle which has a 600 pixels in the width and a 400 pixels in the height without the borders. Then I will link my JavaScript file to my HTML file. I will call it pond.js. The first thing I will do inside my JavaScript file is to select my canvas. So I'm gonna say document that get element ID pawn the ID of our canvas and then set this to a constant called canvas so I won't need to type in all the code again. Then I will get the context of the canvas which allows me or which gives me the methods and properties to draw to the canvas. I will set this also to a constant called context. Now to draw to a canvas, the things we need to draw are a rectangle and a circle for the ball. I will have first to set the color with which I will fill the rectangle. So I'm gonna say context.fill style equals black. Then I will use the fill rect method. The fill rect method takes in these arguments, the x position. So I'm gonna say 100 pixels for the x position. I will go to my canvas at start from the left and take 100 pixels. Then the y position. 200 pixels. So I'm going to start from the top of the canvas and take 200 pixels. So this is the position of our rectangle. Now for the width, 50 pixels. For the height, 75 pixels. So our canvas or our rectangle will be drawn here. To draw a circle or a ball, we need first to set a color with which we will fill the circle. So I'm going to say fill style equals red. Then I'm going to begin the path, context that begin path. Then I will use the arc method, which takes in the X position of the ball, of the center of the ball, then the Y position, 350 pixels, for example. Then the radius of the ball, 100 pixels. Then the start angle. Remember, a circle always start from zero degrees to 360 degrees. So I'm going to say math that pi times 2, 360 degrees. Now, uh, I will set the direction, which is not really important when we are drawing a circle. So if I say false for the direction, which means the circle will be drawn in the clockwise direction. Otherwise, it will be drawn in the counterclockwise direction. Then I will have to close the path and then I will fill the shape. Draw functions. I will need to draw a rectangle, so I will create a function for that. So inside the function, we will need to set the fill style color, then the fill rect method. I will call my function draw rect, which takes in five parameters x and y, the width it and the height and the color. Then to draw a circle I will need to set the fill style equals color. Then I will begin the path 
then the arc which takes an x and y on r or the start angle and the end angle remains the same then I will close the path and then I will fill the shape then I will call the function draw circle which takes in the x and y position the radius and the color I will draw also text so I will need to set the fill style then the font the font size and the font family and then the fill text method which takes in the text itself then its x and y position I will call this draw text which takes in the text the x and y position and the color no movements no gain so how can we move a rectangle in our canvas for example remember to create to draw a rectangle we created a function called the draw rect so for example, we will go and draw a rectangle which has 100 in the width and in the height, so a square with a red color in this position. Now, let's say we want to move this rectangle vertically. So, you may say that I will have to go and say draw rect. I will just change the x position and everything else will remain the same. If I do this, I will just create another rectangle. So, here the idea is before drawing this rectangle I will need first to get rid of the old one do that I will need to draw another rectangle another rectangle which has the dimensions of our canvas 600 in the width and 400 in the height and start at this position 0 0 which means the top left of our canvas and then I will use another color a different color which is not red if I do this I will draw the first rectangle then I will clear the canvas and then draw the new rectangle in a new position if I do this many times it will create an illusion which makes us feel like there is a movement so now if I say draw rect then which means clearing the canvas then drawing the rectangle then clear the canvas again and draw the rectangle in the new position so simple but we're not going to do this this way so I will go and create a variable called rect x and they will initialize it with zero then I will create a function called render for example inside I will clear the canvas first then I will draw a rectangle but I'm not going to say zero here because I will need to change this volume so I'm going to say rect x instead then I will increment the position of the rectangle by 100 for example then I will need some other function that will call the render function here every 1000 milliseconds or one second which is the set interval the set interval here will call the render every one second which means we will run this code so many times and also incrementing direct x every time with 100 pixels so this will create something like this so clearing the canvas drawing the rectangle clearing the canvas drawing the rectangle and so on and this will make an illusion which will make us feel like there is a movement now let's talk about the game components we have here a table which is a canvas filled with the black then two rectangles the computer and the user puddle then the net in the middle of the canvas and then the ball and the score of the user and the computer let's now go and create these components we first need to create the user and the computer puddles the computer and the user puddles are both objects which has an x and y position which is this dots here so a rectangle its position is its top left corner now the width it both equals to 10 pixels the height both equal to 100 pixels the color is white and the score is initialized with zero now let's find the x position of the user's puddle so this is the x equals zero so the x of the user is zero now the x position of the computer 
puddle. This is the canvas that we divide by two. This is the canvas that with it. Here, this, this is the width of the puddle. So this is the canvas that with it minus 10. So here x as canvas that with it minus 10. Now this is the y position equals zero. This is the canvas that height divided by two. And this is the canvas that height. This is the height of the puddle. This is the half of the height. So the y position here is the canvas that height divided by two minus 50 pixels or the canvas that height divided by two minus 100 pixels divided by two. Both the user and the computer panels have the same y position. So the y position of the computer are also equal to canvas that height divided by two minus the height divided by two. Now to draw this rectangles or these panels, we will say draw rect. So this is the x position of the user, the y position, it's with it, its height and its color. And the same thing for the computer puddle. Now let's go and draw the net. Before we need to create the net object. So the net object here has an x position or a with it, which is two, then the height, which is 10 pixels. Every part of the net is 10 pixels, not the wall net. And then the color is white for the x position. So this is zero. Canvas that width divided by two and canvas that width. The canvas that width divided by two minus two divided by two. So to well center the net, we will need to subtract its width divided by two. Then its y position equals zero because our our net will start from the top of the canvas. Then I will create a function called draw net, which will have a full loop inside. So this full loop will start from zero until canvas at height and while incrementing by 15. And then I will use the draw rect function. So this is x position of the net, the y position of the net, its width, it, its height and its color. So when we start the full loop the first time, i equals zero. So we will draw the first part, which is 10 pixels height here. Then after the next loop, the i equals 15. So here zero plus 15, which means we will draw a gap here and then draw another 10 pixels and so on. Let's now draw the ball. Here's our canvas. The ball, when the game starts, should be drawn in the middle or in the center of the canvas. The ball is also an object. So this is the canvas that we divide by two. So it's X position. This is the height divided by two. So it's Y position. It has a radius, which is 10 pixels. Then a color, which is white. To draw this circle, we will say, Draw bolded x for the x, bolded y for the y, the radius, and its color. Now let's go and draw the score. This is the x equals zero. This is the width divided by four. This is the width times two divided by four. This is three times the width divided by four. And this is the four times the width divided by four, which is the width. This is y equals zero. This is the height divided by five. This is the height times two divided by five. This is three times the height divided by five. And this is the four times the height divided by five. And this is the five times the height divided by five, which is the height. Now, to draw text, we'll use this function. The score of the user will be drawn in this position. So we'll say draw text user.score for which is equal to zero when the game starts. Then the canvas that with it divided by four, it's at X position. Canvas that high divided by five for the Y position and the color is white. For the computer score, we will say draw text. The computer that score position, it's three times the canvas that with it divided by four. And then for the Y position, it's canvas that high divided by five, the same as the user score. Let's now go and render the game. For that, I will use a function called render 
The first thing is clearing the canvas using a black color. Then I will draw the computer and the user skull. Then the net. And then the user puddle. Then the computer puddle. And then the ball in the center. I will use a function called the game to call the render. And then I will create a constant called frame per second equals 50, which means 50 frames per second. Then I will call the game 50 times every one second. For that, I will use the unset interval function. This means that set interval will call the game 50 times every one second. And then I will call the update function inside the game. The update function will do the movements, the collision detection, the score update, all the game logic. Now let's see how to move the ball. Our ball object looks like this so far. When the game starts, the ball will be in the center of the canvas. I will need another property for the object, which is speed, for the speed of the ball. Now, if the ball is going horizontally to the right, this means that we are incrementing its x position. And if it's going down vertically, this means that we are incrementing its y position. For this, I will need two other properties, which are the velocity x and the velocity y, both equal to 5. If you are wondering what is the difference between the speed and the velocity, the velocity is the speed plus the direction. So, both the velocities are equal to 5, the speed, but they have different directions. Now, inside our update function, so we will call from the game function, will increment the x position by the velocity x, and we are incrementing the y position by the velocity y, which means the ball will go in this direction. And instead, if we are incrementing the x position and decrementing the y position, the ball will go in this direction. And if we are decrementing both the y and x position, the ball will go in this direction. Instead, if we are decrementing the x position and incrementing the y position, the ball will go in this direction. When the game starts, the ball will go in this direction, as we are incrementing both the x and y position. And then when it hits the bottom of the canvas or the table, it must go in this direction, which is this one. If you can see here, the x remains the same still incrementing but just to reverse the y velocity which means to reverse the ball or the direction of the ball when it hits the top the top or the bottom of the canvas we just need to reverse the velocity y from 5 for example to minus 5 before doing that we need to know something this is our ball touching the bottom of the canvas this is its y position. So the y and x position of the ball, it's its center position, not the edges of the ball. This is the ball that radius. The bottom of the canvas is the canvas that height. The bottom of the ball is the ball that y plus the ball that radius. So we need to see f, the ball that y plus the ball that radius, is greater than the canvas that height. Then we will need to reverse the velocity y. So I'm going to say velocity y equals minus the velocity y. Now, what if the ball touches the top of the canvas? Here is the ball that y again. And this is the ball that radius. This is the zero position, the top of the canvas. And then the top of the ball is the ball that y minus the ball that radius. So here I'm going to say or the ball that y minus the ball that radius is less than zero, we reverse the velocity y and the ball should go in the other direction. Let's now talk about how do we detect if there's a collision. 
For that, I will create a function called collision, which takes in two parameters, the ball and the player, B and P. The player may be the user or the computer. To make our code more readable, I will need to know the player the top or the top of the bundle. So here the player the top is equal to player that y. So inside the function I will say p the top equals p that y. This is the height of the puddle. Then the player at bottom is the player that y plus the player that height. So I'm gonna say b p that bottom equals p that y plus p that height. Then for the left, it's the player that x. Then this is the with it. So the player that right is the player that x plus the player that with it or the puddle that with it. Then the same for the ball. So the top of the ball is the ball that y minus the ball that radius. Because we're going to the top, we need to subtract the ball that radius. So I'm going to say b dot top equals b dot y minus the b dot radius. And then the ball dot bottom is the ball dot y plus the ball dot radius. So this is the ball dot y plus the ball dot radius. Then the ball dot left is the ball dot x minus, as we're going to the left, ball dot radius. Then for the ball dot right is the ball dot x plus the ball dot radius. Now, there is a collision F. We have this case, so the right of the ball is greater than the player that left, and the ball that top is less than the player that bottom, and the ball that left is less than the ball the player that right, and then the ball that bottom is greater than the player that top. We return this line of code. So if all of this are true, means there is a collision, the collision function will return true. If one of them is false, the collision function will return false. There is no collision. So now in our update function, I will go and use an if statement saying collision between the ball and the player. But before this, we need to know who's the player. Is it the user or the computer? Here's our compass. This is the compass that we divided by 2. Now, if the ball is here, means the ball x is less than the compass that we divided by 2, and the collision happened, so we know for sure that the collision is between the ball and the user. So here, the player is the user. Instead, if the ball x is greater than the compass that we divided by 2, which means the player is the computer. So I will go and say f ball that x is less than canvas that we have divided by 2 means the player is the user, else the player is the computer. I'm going to create a new variable called player. Now, when the ball hit, for example, the center of the puddle should go in this direction, means 0 degrees. Instead, if the ball hit the top of the puddle, the ball should go in a 45 degrees, which is math that pi divided by 4 in a radian. And also, if the ball hit the, the bottom, the very bottom of the bottom, the ball should go in a 45 degrees. So when you create your game, you could use an angle less or greater than 45 degrees. You may use 50 degrees, 60 degrees, or whatever you like. So now, after the collision happened, we need to change the velocity x and the velocity y of the ball. We will change it based on where the ball hit the paddle. So now we need to go and find the value of the velocity x and y. So let's see an example. Let's say the ball is going this direction. It's going with a speed, which is the ball that's speed. Also means it's going in the x direction with the velocity x. And it's going in the y direction with a velocity y. Right? Let's take now this as an angle. Let's say this is the angle A, A for angle. I think all you guys know what is the cosinus of this angle. So the cosinus of this angle, it is the velocity x divided by the ball at speed. 
also the sinus of this angle it is the velocity y divided by the ball that speeds so now from this equation we can know what the velocity x equals so i'm going to say velocity x equals the ball that speed times the cosinus of the angle and also here the ball that velocity y equals the ball that speed times the sinus of the angle the question now is how can we calculate this angle so let's start with an example this is the puddle this is the top of the puddle which has the user that y this is the half of the puddle so here is the center of the puddle the y position of the center is user dot y plus the user dot height divided by two. Here is our ball. This is the ball dot y, the y position of the ball. So now, if the ball hit the puddle in the center, means the y position are the same. Means the difference between the y position of the ball and the y position of the puddle is zero. So whenever we say ball dot y minus the user dot y plus the user dot y divided by two and it returns zero we will know for sure that the ball hit the puddle in the center so i'm gonna go and say collided parent or the collide parent equals the ball dot y minus the y position of the center of the puddle so this will return zero so whenever we get zero from this difference here we need that the ball hit the puddle in the center if the ball now hit the the puddle at the top so this will turn minus user dot height divided by two do some calculation and you will get that then if it hit the ball in the bottom we will get user dot height divided by two which means we will get always numbers between minus 50 and 50 right now these numbers here minus 50 and 50 we can normalize them which means instead of getting numbers between minus 50 and 50 we can get numbers between minus 1 and 1 it is simple you can see it here so all i'm going to do now is divide the collide bound by the user that i divided by 2 which means here I will get minus 1, 0, 1. So now I'm getting numbers between minus 1 and 1, right? Remember, when the ball hits here, the top of the puddle, it should go in a 45 degrees, which means pi divided by 4. So all I am going to do is minus 1 times math that pi divided by 4. And so for all the others which means that the angle here in a radian equals the collide bound times the math pi divided by 4. We just calculated the A or the angle. Let's do some examples to understand what's what going to happen. Now let's go and calculate the cosinus of the angle. So cos of minus pi divided by 4 is 0 0.7. Then we will go and multiply it by the ball at speed, which is equal to 5 when the game starts, which means that the velocity x here equals 3.5. Remember, this is a positive number. Now, the sinus of the angle here is minus 0 0.7 times the ball at speed, so the velocity y will be minus 3.5, a negative number, which means here that the ball here is going to the right, because the velocity x is a positive number and the velocity y is negative means the ball is going to the top which means the ball is going in this direction which means that we get what we want the ball here is going in a 45 degrees angle let's go to the next example the cos of 0 is 1 multiply or times the speed means the velocity x equals 5. Here the sinus of 0 is 0, which means the velocity y is 0, which means that the ball is moving only by the x-axis. 
which means the bolt should go in a zero degrees angle. The last example, the cost of pi dot 4 is 0 0.7 times bolt speed means the velocity x equals 3.5, a positive number. The velocity y here is 3.5, a positive number, which means the ball is going to the right by the x-axis and to the bottom by the y-axis, which means this is the direction of our ball, which means the ball will go in this direction when it hit the bottom of the pile. So now, if a collision happened, we will go and calculate the glide balance calculating the difference between the y position of the ball and the center of our paddle and then normalize the numbers so here we get numbers from minus 50 to 50 and here we will normalize them so we will get the numbers between minus 1 and 1 then we calculate the angle in radian by multiplying the collide balance by 45 degrees or pi divided by 4 then the ball that we lost the x equals the ball that speed times the cosinus of this angle and the velocity y equals the ball that speed times the sinus of this angle and then you should know that every time the the ball was hit by a puddle we should increment the speed by 0 0.1 so each time the ball is hit we increment its speed which means that during the game the speed of the ball is increasing so the game will get harder and harder every time a, a player hit the ball. One last thing is when the ball hit the user's puddle it should go to the right which means the velocity x is positive. Instead when the computer hits the ball it should go to the left which means the velocity x is negative. But if you remember the velocity x is always positive. So we should create another variable direction. So if the ball at x is less than the canvas that we did divided by 2, which means the ball is hit by the user, direction is positive. And instead, if it's hit by the, the computer, the direction is negative. So I'm just going to go and multiply this line by direction. Let's now update the score. If the ball goes beyond the canvas, in this case, it's the computer that scores. So here we need to say f the ball that x minus the ball that radius is less than zero. We increment the computer score by one, and then we should reset the ball, which means we need to draw the ball again in the center of the canvas. The reset ball function here will reset the x and y position to the center of the canvas and reset the ball speed and set it to 5 and then we need to inverse the velocity x. What I mean here is when the user for example scores the velocity after a reset will still go to this direction if we didn't inverse the, the x velocity so in this case when we inverse the velocity x means that if the user scores the ball will not go in this direction we go in the inverse direction we go in this direction and also if the computer scores the ball when the ball is a reset it will go into the computer direction now when the ball goes here means over the canvas in the computer side we will say f or else f the ball that x plus the ball radius is greater than the canvas with it then we should increment the user score by one and receive the ball again let's now talk how do we control the user's panel the user's paddle is controlled using the mouse, so we need to add an event listener to our canvas, which is a mouse move. And then this will fire up a function called move paddle. 
So the function move puzzle will get as a parameter an event, which is mouse move. The user dot y equals here event that client y. This is how you get the position of the mouse. So the user dot y is the y position of the puzzle. So every time the mouse moves, the user dot y or the y position of the puzzle will be exactly the y position of the mouse. But this won't be always the case. Let's say I scroll down the page a little bit. The user y isn't exactly the position of the mouse. So I have to see here is create another variable called rect equals the canvas that get bound in client rect. What this does is return. So when you say canvas get bound in client rect will return the x and y position of the canvas, its top position, right, bottom and left position and also the height and width it in red only. So when you scroll down the page, the top of the position will change, which means I need to subtract direct the top. This way I will always take in mind the scrolling. Now we should get something like this. The top of the puddle is the same as the mouse Y position, but it's really great to have the center of the puddle is the Y position of the mouse. So here what I need to do is subtract the user at high divided by two. Let's go and create a simple AI to control the computer puddle. The computer puddle should follow the ball just like this. To do that, I will need to calculate the difference bet between the Y position of the ball and the center of the computer's puddle. Then I will increment the computer puddle by this difference. This means that the center of the puddle will always be the same as the Y position of the ball, which means you won't be able to beat the computer. So to solve this problem, I will need to go and create a new variable called computer level. And I will set it equal to a small number, for example 0.1. Then I will multiply this by the computer level. Now, as the ball's speed increases, you will be able to beat the computer. For example, if we say computer level equals 1, in this case, you will never be able to beat the computer. So, I think now you are ready to type in the code. Before that, if you are not subscribed yet, please click the button and subscribe. If you are subscribed, please click this button to get notified about every new tutorial. I will go now and create a folder called Pawn for our project and I will open it with brackets. Then I will create two files. The first one is the index.html and the second is Pawn.js. I will create a basic HTML code. I'm going to change the title to Pong JavaScript. And then I will create the canvas element, the ID Pong, a width of 600 pixels, a height of 400 pixels. Then I will link my JS file to the HTML file. I'm going to run this live preview. So inside the Pong.js, I will select the canvas using the document that get element by id method then i will get the context of the canvas and now i will create the functions to draw so the first one is to draw a rectangle so i'm going to say uh, the fill style equals color then the fill rect method which gets in for parameters x and y the width and the height so our draw rect will get five parameters let's try the function so i'm going to say draw rect 0 0 to top corner of the canvas the width and the height of the canvas then the black color so this should clear the canvas okay 
Now I will go and create the function to draw a circle for our ball. I'm going to say function draw circle. This will take in three parameters, which are four parameters, x, y, the radius, and the color. Don't set x, fill style equals color. Then we should begin the path. Then use the arc method. The x, y, r, the start angle, the end angle. 360 degrees then we should close the path and then fill the shape let's not write that so draw circle 100 pixels for x same for y 50 for the radius and the y and now we can see the ball now let's go and create a function to draw text so i'm going to say context fill style equals color context font so we're gonna use the font size for the five pixels the fantasy for the font family then fill text which gets as arguments text itself the x and y position so x y and color now let's try that so i'm gonna say draw text something the x is 300 and 200 i'm gonna go uh and save it so doesn't work so text is not defined yes i didn't set it as a parameter for the draw text function so i'm going to say here text now i will go and refresh and now i can see the text now let's go and uh, and create the user paddle so it's an object I'm going to create the X property, X position. Y is the composite height divided by 2 minus the half of the height. The width it as 10 pixels. The height is 100 pixels. Then the color is white. And the score is 0, is initialized with 0. So the same for the computer. Uh, here it's the canvas that with it minus 10 the width of the paddle now i have to create the the ball so const ball the ball should be in the center so i'm gonna say canvas that with it divided by 2 for x canvas that height divided by 2 for the y position then the radius is 10 pixels and the speed is 5 velocity x and y both equal to the initialized speed then the color is white now let's go and create our render function to render the game so uh, i'm gonna clear the canvas first I'll clear the canvas and then i will draw the net draw net function i will create it in a moment then i will need to draw the score so draw text the user that score for the text and for the x position is the user or the canvas that we did divided by four and for the y position is the canvas that height divided by five and the color is white okay the computer score here and three times the canvas we did divided by four now i will go and and draw the the puddles the user and the computer puddles so i'm gonna say draw rect here so the user dot x the y position the width it the height and the color then i'm gonna draw the i'm just gonna copy this so here computer instead of user let's go now and draw the ball so I'm going to say draw circle. So the x is the ball at x, the ball at y for the y position, the ball at the radius, and then the color. Uh, I will take off, take off these lines. Then now I need to create the net. The net also is an object. So I'm going to say const net equals the x position is the canvas that with it minus one which is the half of the with it 
then the width it is 2 the height is uh, 10 pixels and then the color is white I'm going to create now the function to draw the net so for let i equal 0 we start from 0 until the canvas at height and we increment i by 15 each time so for the x position it's net.x net.y and then net that width it and net that height and the color and here I will add the I variable so I'm gonna create here the game function so function game which will call two functions render and update here I will create a loop so I will use the set interval game 1000 every 50 times so which is the frame per second constant so here the the set interval we call the game 50 times every one second let's save that uh, and they can see the net I open the console no problem so now I should go to the object net and see oh yeah the canvas that with it divided by two the center okay so now we can see the net and the middle or the center of the canvas so now let's go and create our update function which will uh, do the logic behind the game the movement uh, the update and the score and uh, everything else so the first thing is going to to move the ball so we're gonna increment the ball x by the ball velocity x and the y position by the velocity y now if i refresh you can see the ball moving down now we need to uh, so when the ball hit the 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 bottom line or the bottom of the canvas we should inverse the the velocity y so i'm going to say here uh, and also if it hits the top of the canvas we should inverse the the ball velocity y so i'm going to say velocity y equals minus velocity y now i can see here the ball is returned by the wall let's go now and create a collision function or a collision detection function so the collision here will take in two parameters b for ball and p for player so i'm gonna create here some other parameters so to make the code more readable so i'm gonna say the top of the ball the bottom of the ball and uh, also it's right and left uh, areas or edges The same for the paddle so i'm going to say p dot top is p dot y the p dot bottom we're going to add the height then the p dot left is the p dot x and the p dot right we're going to add again the width it now there is a collision f this conditions are true so if these conditions are true means there is a collision if one of them is false the collision detection function will return false which means there is no collision now inside our function update I will create a player variable which will determine which player is hitting the ball so I'm gonna say ball that x is less than the canvas that will divide by 2 it's the user else it's the computer then f collision of the ball and the player is true uh, first I will go and control the, the the paddle so I'm gonna go and control the user's paddle uh, I'm gonna add an event listener to our canvas so I'm gonna say mouse mouse move and then we'll fire up a function called move paddle so the move paddle here where takes in uh, an argument which is event and mouse move then I will need to create a variable called rect to get the top of the canvas when scrolling 
So the user dot y equals the event dot client, the position of the mouse. Then we get rid of the scrolling, and then we center the the paddle. Now, as you can see here, I can uh, control the paddle using my mouse. In the center of the paddle, actually. Now, uh, let's create a simple AI to control the computer paddle. So I'm gonna computer dot y. We increment this by the difference between the y position of the ball and the center position of the computer's paddle. Then we will multiply this by a small number. We call it the computer level. The computer level here is, is set equal to 0 0.1. As you can see here now, the the paddle of the computer is following the ball. Now let's go and uh, see what will happen if we just inverse the velocity of the ball. Okay, now you can see that the computer can now hit and return the ball, but it's uh, a static game or unchangeable game. You can predict where the ball will go. So to fix that, I will go and see where the ball hits or hit the player. So let collide pound equal the difference between the paddles or the or the y position of the ball and the center of the paddle. So here the player dot height divided by two. Then the collide here pound equals the collide pound. Okay, here by divided by two. Let's now go and create or calculate the, the angle in radian. So I'm going to say let angle radian equals collide pound times four, 45 degrees, which is pi divided by 4. Now let's change the velocity x and y based on that. So I'm going to say ball, ball that velocity x equals ball that speed times the math or the cosinus of the angle in a region. The same for the y. And then, uh, you know, every time the ball it's a, it is hit by the paddle, we increase its speed. So we are creating in some challenges for the user and the computer. So if I refresh, the ball goes through the computer's paddle. To fix that, I will need to add a direction. Because when the user, or uh, when the computer hits the ball, the ball should go to the to the right, uh, to the left. Sorry, to the left. So we need to add here a a variable called direction equals ball that x is less than canvas that we divide by two. Direction is positive, else negative, and we multiply the velocity x by the direction. Now, the user. Uh, there's a problem. There's a problem with the angle. It's not 45 degrees. Okay. Where is the problem? Oh yeah, this is the problem here. I didn't add parentheses. Let's now go and uh, reset the ball and update the score. So I will go and say f the ball that x minus the ball that radius is less than zero means the computer win here or the computer scores. So I'm going to say computer the score plus plus incrementing the score by one. Then I will reset the ball and f here the ball that x plus the ball that radius is greater than the canvas that with it means that the user scores. So I'm gonna see here user that score plus plus. Let's go and create the reset function. So our reset function here will just take back the ball to the center of the canvas. So I'm gonna say ball that x equals the canvas that we divide by two. And the ball at y equals the canvas dot height divided by two. We should reset the speed to five and reverse the velocity x. I will go now and uh, 
set this to 0 0.5 so we can see the the difference fast so let's go now and see what will happen if the user and the computer hit the ball for some time yeah you can see now that the ball is speeding up which will make it hard for the player and the computer too I will try to beat the computer oh oh you can see how you can see here that when when the user or when the computer scores the ball is is its speed is is a reset and the and also the computer's score is incremented by one 